way of Will John. Okay, so Michaela Peterson, for some of you guys that don't know, she's a huge proponent of the carnivore diet, which is essentially, right, just eating only only meat. Yeah, um, like salt and, or something like that, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. salt salt and, and meat and, and mm-hmm. a lot of red meat, I think. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm no expert by any means, but, uh, and I think uh, I, I'll withhold what I, th- my idea and what I've kind of seen and, and heard from uh, Dr. Rhonda Patrick is another person who's spoken about it, who was on the fence about what it could do and all this stuff until mm-hmm. we can see more testing and things like that. But, uh, what are your thoughts on why that's so prevalent? I have my own idea that I'll share, but what do you think? Yeah. Um, so, well, the carnivore diet is in, in, a, in a sense, it's an elimination diet and uh, many people anecdotally report, um, feeling better after consuming a carnivore diet. Now there's multiple reasons why this could be the case. Um, if you're going from a bunch of processed food to just a straight up meat, you're bound to feel better in that you're not consuming, you know, these super ultra processed foods and, and, you know, re- refined sugars going down all these kinds of things. Um, there's also, uh, inevitable or almost inevitable weight loss that occurs as well. Cause it's very hard to be in a calorie surplus on a carnivore diet. So okay. often it is the case that people lose weight and, and, different symptoms will go down that are, that are, um, that are bad. Uh, just weight loss in general comes with the lessening of, of, uh, of symptoms. Right. So there's that as well. Uh, now why is it appealing? I mean, you know, meat is already this kind of like sensationalized thing. Like, Ooh, like, like meat is, especially for like males. I think, I think like meat being manly is a kind of like a, a thing that, uh, is, is talked about. So maybe it's the appeal of like, Oh, the fact that it's, Oh, all meat. Um, there's people that tie it to our ancestors uh, and how our ants, even though it's, it's not even true that our ancestors were, were carnivore, carnivore, but, um, and also because it's an elimination diet, there could be people with autoimmune symptoms or, or negative symptoms that are the result of a plant food that they've been consuming, that they might have an allergy to or something like that. And through going carnivore, they've indirectly stopped eating that food. And now they feel like much better. And it, so it's not that the carnivore diet is like necessarily it was solving their problem. It's that the avoidance of a one or two plant foods that were causing their problem um, is what's solving their problem, like the avoidance of those two foods. So that there could be that as yeah. well. Um, now, the data on the carnivore diet is very weak. There really is not much. Um, there was a Harvard study that came out that was like a, basically a complete joke. The, uh, the people, it was, a self, it was self-reported. And the sample size of the study was also uh, self-reported, meaning there was no randomization. It was literally like people from a carnivore tribe Facebook group just volunteering to be in it. Uh, no objective measurements were taken in the study. It was all just self-reported. Um, mm-hmm. It was the le- one of the least scientific studies you can imagine. Um, it's like it's like telling getting a bunch of crystal sellers to report to you how they feel after um, using crystals, like shocker stuff. You know, and so it's not it, not a good uh, set of data. Now the data on like saturated fat is what makes us think that the carnivore diet isn't good. I'm um, given that saturated fat can, uh, increase your LDL cholesterol and then an increase of LDL cholesterol, um, uh, has a, uh, literally a causal relationship with the, um, with the atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease or just uh, heart disease. Um, so that's why we worry about things like the carnivore diet being promoted because your saturated fat as a consequence goes up so much, which can lead to, um, you know, higher LDL. And, uh, there's also, there's studies where where they actually track meat consumption in large populations and they control for all of these other uh, confounding factors. If people here aren't familiar with, with what that means, it just means like variables that could actually alter the outcome. So they'll control for everything like, uh, vegetable intake going up fruit intake going up, smoking intake going down. Well, they'll have all of these, these things happening. So people are t- taking it upon themselves to do all these little healthy things like reducing smoking, increasing exercise, but they'll still see that when there's two groups that are doing all those things, but one group is increasing their meat consumption and the other is not the, 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 the group that's increasing their meat consumption still sees an, in, an increase in disease risk. And this is kind of like how you, uh, establish whether or not a particular intervention or a particular uh, food or whatever might be causing something bad, right? You take you take two groups or multiple groups and you you adjust for confounding factors and you see how the results differ. And so 
So yeah, there's plenty of data essentially to support the, the idea that uh, red meat especially um, is, is not good for you. So that's another reason why people are a bit worried that the carnivore diet is is uh, is starting to like kind of become a trend. And then of course, environmentally and ethically, there's a concern given how unsustainable um, animal agriculture is for the environment, its uh, impact on greenhouse gas emissions, its water use, its uh, land use. Because when you think about what animal products are, they are products derived from animals, meaning we also need to grow crops to feed those animals to then get the calories from them. Okay. And like you get about, I think, I believe 10% of the calories that you put into an animal, you get it back in the form of meat. So let's say, um, just an easy way to think of it. Basically for every 15 pounds of, uh, or for every, uh, 200 calories of grain you feed an animal, you'll get back maybe like 20 calories of meat. You know, it's, it's a super inefficient right. process. It's like taking the nutrients that you would want and giving them to another being and then filtering it out of the being to get like 10, 10% <laughs> of it back. It's really right. silly. And then of course there's the, yeah. the ethical part as well, which is the, where you're literally killing animals. So, uh -huh. mm -hmm. so, uh, just before I, I, I touch on what you, what you finished there with, I feel that the biggest portion and the biggest benefit from the carnivore diet is the elimination factor. I feel that it has to be. Mm -hmm. That's just me, given what I know about uh, my very limited view on friends, what they eat, what they do. Uh, mm -hmm. I think that it can confound with, and proper diet change does also confound with the, generally, the people who do it right, who do it and say that they're going to go, because people in dieting, it's very fickle, as we all know. People mm -hmm. just try and start things and they stop and they try and say they're going to do things and they don't. And, and you know, right. but the people who do do it right, that they do commit to, when they finally commit, usually there are other supplemental factors that also go in. They start going to bed early. Mm -hmm. They start, you know, yeah. they start drinking water instead of 7-Up uh, and Coke right. and, and stuff like that, you know. And so you you have a lot of factors. And I think that the elimination portion of the carnivore diet, now I obviously too, I don't know uh, whether or not it's... Uh, uh, you know, truly beneficial, or if these people are getting any true benefit off of that, or if it's maybe they're getting some sort of short term benefit and there's a long term issue, you know, something like that. There's mm -hmm. obviously, you know, the we, we don't know enough uh, now. Uh, so that for me seems to be the thing. Uh -huh.